Tuesday, November 28th. Luis Cruz is dead. When I walked into first period this morning, there was a group of kids standing around and whispering. Henry D. came up to me and said, did you hear what happened? No. Tino and Teresa were waiting outside yesterday for Luis to pick them up, but he never came. Teresa called home and told their father. He went out to the grove and found Luis lying there dead. Found him what? Dead. Right out in the new grove. I stared at Henry like he was crazy. Dead? Are you saying that Luis is dead? That's right. Their father called 911. Wayne was one of the guys on call. He said Luis was dead when they got there, that he had been dead for hours. Dead? Dead of what? Wayne said it might have been an aneurysm. Like a blood clot. He thinks Luis got hit on the head. It formed into a blood clot and that killed him. My mind was racing in circles. I finally said, what? Someone hit Luis on the head and killed him? No, Wayne said the sheriff's deputies don't think it was a murder or anything like that. They think Luis might have gotten hit on the head last Wednesday night when all those frozen tree branches were breaking off. They think maybe one of the branches hit him on the head and started the aneurysm thing going, but they don't know anything for sure. I put my hand over my mouth, afraid that I would throw up. I whispered, he got hit on the head Wednesday night? They don't know that. They're just saying maybe. One shot to the head, five, six days ago? How is that going to kill anybody? Henry could see how upset I was getting. He didn't reply. I mean, you see these guys in the Kung Fu movies getting hit on the head a thousand times and they keep on fighting, right? Right. I raised my hand and got Mrs. Pollard's attention. I said, I gotta go. I'm sick again. I hurried into the hall, pushing past a stream of kids all the way to the office. I asked to use the phone and left a quick message for mom. Come back right away. I'm sick again. An aide led me into the sterile black and white room that turned out to be the nurse's office. I slumped down into a black chair and waited there. Dry-eyed, speechless, numb. Mom returned at 9 o'clock to sign me out. She told Dr. Johnson, I guess we sent him back to school too early. I rode home in a painful trance. Finally, when we pulled into our development, Mom said, this cold of yours is really bad. It's really persistent. I nodded slowly. Yeah, I thought. How could she believe that? How could she believe that I'm in the sixth day of a severe cold when I have not coughed or sneezed even one time? Has it even occurred to her that that isn't the truth? That I might be making it all up? Probably not. I decided to share part of the truth with her. I said, Luis Cruz is dead. She thought for a minute, who, honey? Luis Cruz. He's Tino and Teresa's brother. He was at the Grove the day you drove me out there. I guess you didn't see him. He came to nearly all of our soccer games, but I guess you didn't see him there either. He used to pick tangerines on Merritt Island. He injured his knee doing that. He played goalie for Tangerine Middle School. He invented a new variety of citrus. Then a tree branch broke off and hit him on the head. I looked over at mom. She was nodding sympathetically. Did she want to hear more? Maybe the whole truth? Did she want to hear anything bad? Should I come right out and say, actually, mom, he wasn't killed by a tree branch. He was killed by Arthur Bauer on orders from Eric. What would she do if she heard that? Would she swerve into a utility pole? Or would she do what she always did back in Houston? Take my temperature and threaten to call the doctor? I didn't say anything else. When I got into the house, I went straight to dad's IBM and logged on. I put in a CD-ROM called Health Text and searched for aneurysm. I found out that it's not a blood clot at all. It's a weakening of a blood vessel, like a little bubble that swells out from a vein or an artery. That's all there was about it. So I got online searching for a medical homepage. The Tangerine County Medical Center listed one called Ask a Nurse. I got into it and typed, can you get an aneurysm from an injury to the head? I received a reply right away. No, you are either born with an aneurysm or you were born with the tendency to get one. I typed in, can an aneurysm kill you? Yes. An aneurysm can burst, causing a massive stroke and death. What could cause it to burst? The aneurysm gradually deteriorates due to the constant pressure of the blood passing passing through it. Could an injury to the head cause it to burst? Yes. An injury to the head could could further weaken the aneurysm and cause it to burst. Would this happen right away or could it happen a week later? It could happen right away or a week later after the injury or a month after, depending on the condition of the aneurysm. I typed in thank you and logged off. I had my answer. Luis had been killed by Arthur Bauer on Tuesday, but it had taken six days for him to die. That shot from the blackjack had been just as deadly to Luis as a shot from a gun. I went upstairs and lay on my bed until 3.30. Then I called Henry D. Henry, what else did you hear about Luis? I haven't heard anything new from Wayne. I did hear from Dolly that Luis's funeral is going to be on Thursday at noon. Oh, all right, I'll be there. Do you think the whole team will go? I expect so. They all knew Luis. A lot of us owed Luis for things. A lot of us got rides from him in the truck in that truck of his. Yeah, look, if you hear anything else, anything at all, especially from Wayne, will you please give me a call? I sure will. 
at dinner time, mom knocked, knocked lightly on my door and brought in some vegetable soup and a basket of rolls. I pretended to be asleep. She put them down quietly and started to leave, but she turned and saw that my eyes were open. She said, how are you feeling, Paul? How is that cold of yours? I didn't answer. So she just smiled weakly and continued out. Wednesday, November 29th. I stayed out of school again today. I got dressed at about 10 and went out back to sit for a while. Mom came out with the telephone and handed it to me. Another girl, she said, a different one. I waited until she went back in to press the button. Hello? Paul Fisher? Yes, this is Teresa Cruz. Teresa, I'm really sorry to hear about what happened. She interrupted me. Her tone was all business. Yeah, I know that. Look, I have to tell you something. Don't you be coming to Luis's funeral. I stammered. Uh, okay. Henry says you're talking about coming, but Tino and Victor and those guys are saying some bad stuff. So you had better not show your face at Luis's funeral. I'm calling to tell you that. All right. I don't want any more bad stuff to happen, especially not at the funeral. No, of course not. So I'm just telling you. Then she hung up. I sat there with my mouth wide open. They knew. They knew everything. Teresa, Tino, Tomas, and his brother Victor and the others, they all knew the truth. They knew that Luis came looking for Eric last Tuesday, and they knew what happened to him at the school. They knew that he didn't get hit by any frozen tree branch. How did they know? I jumped up and hurried through the gate to the front of the house. I turned left and headed down the sidewalk. I had to get away. I had to think. My mind was racing with questions. Did Luis tell someone about it? Of course he did. If he told me about it, he told other people too. Did I really think I could keep this secret from it? them all? Does everybody in Tangerine blame me now? Am I just as guilty as Eric? I was all the way down at the entrance pond before I stopped. I stood there and stared at the dark water until I finally understood, and it was so very simple. There's no big mystery here. The truth about Luis is obvious to all the people around him. Their lives are not made up of bits of pieces of versions of the truth. They don't live that way. They know what really happened, period. Why would that seem so mysterious to me? I sat on the bank and stared at the lifeless water. After a few minutes, I heard a noise behind me and turned. A little boy on a little bike had pulled up about 10 feet away. He looked to be about five years old, not old enough to be out on the road by himself. He sat there staring at me, astride his red 20-inch bike. Then he pointed at the pond and said, They say there's a gator in there. I looked back at the pond. I wanted him to leave, but he went on. They say a gator come out of there last year and ate a kid. I turned back toward him. Oh, yeah? Who says that? My mom and dad. I shook my head. Well, forget it. That didn't happen. He shook his head right back. My mom and dad said it did. I thought about that. I thought about my own mom and dad, and I looked him right in the eye. Then they're lying to you. They're telling you a story just so to keep you scared. They want you to be scared. Do you understand? He stiffened. My mom and dad don't tell me stories. I rose up onto my knees so that we were eye to eye. Oh no, did they tell you a story about a kid who went swimming right after he ate and he got cramps and he drowned? Yeah. Well, did you ever meet that kid? No. Okay, did they tell you about a kid who climbed a utility pole to get a kite back and he got electrocuted? Yeah. And did you ever meet that kid? How can I meet him if he's dead? How about a kid who got bitten by a stray dog and he got rabies and he started foaming at the mouth? Did they ever tell you about him? And did, they, did you ever meet him? The boy straightened out the front wheel of his bike and started to back away. My mom and dad don't lie to me. I got onto my feet. My voice was rising. No? How about this one? Did they tell you about the kid who went out to play football in a thunderstorm and he got struck by lightning and he got killed? He shook his head. Or this one. Did they ever tell you about a kid who climbed a tree with a sharp pair of clippers in his hand and he fell out of the tree and he stabbed himself? Did they ever tell you about either one of those kids? Did you ever meet either one of them? No. Well, I did. I met both of them. He continued to back away. I shouted after him. What about this one? Did you ever hear about this kid, this stupid kid who wouldn't listen to anybody and he stared at a solar eclipse and he went blind? Did you ever hear about him? Did you ever meet him? The poor kid pedaled away as fast as he could. I didn't watch him go. I bent over and looked down at my own murky reflection in the water. Like the final words of a ghost story, I muttered, well, you have now. Thursday, November 30th. Mom left the house at 10 o'clock in the morning. She was gone for most of the day. I was here alone. At exactly 12 noon, I pulled out my blue suit from the closet, the suit that I had worn to Mike Costello's funeral. I got it on without a shirt, shoes, or socks and walked out through the patio doors into the backyard. I must have looked like an idiot. I walked straight out until I was facing the gray wall. I had no clear idea what I was going to do. I just knew that I had to do something. For a while, I stood there staring at the ground like an idiot. 
Then I bent forward and wedged both my hands into the space between the wall and the sod. I pulled the sod up and toward me so that the whole piece of it rolled back onto my feet with its roots sticking up. Beneath it was a rectangle of white sugar and two feet long and three feet wide. I got down on my knees like an idiot on that upside down piece of sod and started to scrape away the sugar and I scooped up big handfuls of it, piling them on either side of the rectangle until I reached the dirt below. I stared at that dirt in fascination, thinking how odd it was that I had never seen it before. This was the dirt that we lived on, the dirt of the tangerine grove that we burned and buried and plowed under and coated with sand and landscaped over. Here it was. The sweat started to drop off my forehead, fogging up my glasses. I yanked them off and threw them over to the side. I didn't even know where they landed. Then I bent over the hole in the dirt until my face was an inch above it. I thought about Luis Cruz, a man I barely knew. I thought about Luis Cruz being lowered into the ground, never to come back up. I felt the tears start to well up deep inside of me. Once they started to come, there was no stopping them. I wept and sobbed and poured tears into the hole in the ground like an idiot. No, I don't think so. When I finished, I stood up, brushed the dirt from my knees and my elbows and located my glasses. I pushed the sand back into place and rolled the sod back into position. Then I came back in here and threw my suit into the garbage. It's remarkable, strange and remarkable. I feel like Luis is a part of me now. I feel like a different person.